wants to do is more murder of Palestinians. Jane, let me ask when you. When are you going to let them go? You don't care about Arab children. You are a Jew hater, defined as someone who only Shut wants to lie up. and say that the Jews you are bigot. genocideers. You and racist. don't try to cancel. This guy is a full-blown bigot. He's one of the most racist people I have ever seen. You simply don't know the history. Read a book. In fact, read a Wikipedia article before you get on TV. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. Today, we're going to be discussing a debate between Rabbi Shmuley and Chenk Yuga. Now, I've been avoiding these Piers Morgan Uncensored Israel-Palestine debates, but today, I've finally taken the bait and I've finally succumbed. The allure was too strong with this one, guys. It highlights some very, very interesting historical points with some modern context and is also pretty entertaining. So I do hope you'll enjoy this breakdown. Let's get into um, it. Jake, let me start with you. Many people are calling for a ceasefire. Uh, Queen Rania of Jordan, Angelina Jolie, uh, Arab leaders and so on. Uh, I presume you would agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that they've murdered enough Palestinian civilians. Uh, and even Netanyahu in an interview with ABC News said, now that we're on the ground, we're finally pressuring Hamas on hostages. Oh, so the 7,000 bombs you dropped were totally useless and collective punishment and your attempt to murder civilians on purpose as some sort of sick vengeance. So please stop the murders. Cease fire right now. Rabbi Shmuley, your response. Uh, Cenk is polling in the Democratic presidential primaries at 0%, nothing. He has a greater That's likelihood of being elected the new king of France. And no, don't interrupt me, please. And the reason is that the American people are decent. They understand that Cenk's anti-Semitism, which he has voiced on your show repeatedly, calling Jews genocide dares. And this is the eve of Kristallnacht, the 85th anniversary of the start of the Holocaust. He would deny the Jewish people the only dignity left to us that we were victims of genocide and he would say that we are the Nazis, we are the Gestapo for simply wanting to I defend didn't say ourselves any of that. Can you against stop lying? the brutality I didn't say and the any savagery of, that. of Hamas. Cenk, 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 you'll have your turn. Just show some decency. If you're not going to show it to my people, show it to me and show it to the viewers of the show. Stop but who is lying. surprised Everything that a man, a that, who is surprised that a man who's, the, whose name, the name of whose podcast is Young Turks who perpetrated the Armenian genocide. The Young Turks is like calling your podcast the Young Nazis, the Young Gestapo. They killed one and a half to two million Armenians between 1915 and 1918. The uh, Armenian community has begged Cenk to change the name of his show. For the first half of his life, he was a complete Are Armenian you genocide discuss denier. The issue? He changed. Are now, you going to now, discuss now, the now, issue? Now, 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 now he is a Holocaust denier because he is saying that the Nonsense. Jews are engaged Total, in a genocide lie. of the Can Palestinians. Now, which nation... Which, all How right. can there be no, no. 1.8 million Shmuley, Muslim made, you, Arab citizens? Rabbi Shmuley, in, okay. I'm going to go to, I'm gonna go to Jenk. So I want to highlight what the rabbi just said here when he calls out Jenk for the name of his organization, which never ceases to amaze me. And I want to go into some detail with this and bear with me because it's all relevant in the context of things. So the Young Turks were a radical revolutionary group during the Ottoman Empire that wanted to replace the empire's absolute monarchy under the Sultan with a constitutional government. And to cut a long story short, in 1908, the Young Turk Revolution took place. And then by 1913, the CUP, or the Committee of Union and Progress had gained complete control over the Ottoman Empire. Now, the CUP was an ethno-nationalist organization that was committed to the process of Turkification and committed a few genocides along the way of religious minorities within the Ottoman Empire, some of which including the Christian Armenians and Assyrians, which we will be discussing here. But unfortunately, when you type in the Young Turks into Google or YouTube, instead of getting a history of this heinous group, you're more likely to get a video of Cenk Yuga complaining about Donald Trump. And when the rabbi says that calling yourself the Young Turks is like calling yourself the Young Nazis, He's not totally wrong about that. There is some truth to that. And here's why. Similar to the Jews, the Armenians were singled out because they were a religious minority. They were Christians in a majority Muslim empire. And over time, the racial superiority sentiment began to build in the Ottoman Empire. And the Armenians were subject to legal discrimination and higher taxes. Another similarity to the story of the Jews is that one of the reasons why the Armenians were singled out is because they were a middleman minority, meaning that they were overrepresented in middleman occupations that facilitated 
facilitated the movement of goods from producer to consumer without necessarily producing anything themselves. Such occupations included money lenders, loan sharks, merchants, and bureaucrats. And today we might think about talent agents or wholesalers, stockbrokers, salesmen, real estate agents, etc. The lucrative and supposedly unproductive nature of this work caused the rest of the population to see them as leeches or parasites. And if you ever wanted to go deeper into this and understand this phenomenon a little bit better, Thomas Sowell talks about it extensively in his book, Migrations and Cultures. And by the way, guys, I'm gonna leave a bunch of links in the bio to other videos that explain what I'm talking about in this video. So also similar to the Jews, the Armenians were subject to some pretty horrendous treatment. They were exiled from their homes and organized into settlements if they were lucky. And if they weren't so lucky, they were sent on what is infamously known as the death marches through the Syrian desert, or they were just slaughtered. And if you guys really wanna see the extent of human depravity, go and search the death marches. Pretty horrific stuff. Furthermore, another similarity between the Jews and the Armenians is that the Armenian genocide also caused an Armenian diaspora around the world, which is why you can find heavy Armenian populations in places like Russia and the United States. So with all these similarities, there's also major differences, particularly with the way that the history is reported. To this day, the Turkish government still officially denies that the genocide occurred. They justify it by citing the threat of an Armenian rebellion, despite the fact that the vast vast majority of those who were exiled and slaughtered were not rebels. Today, 34 countries, including the US, Germany, and Russia, as well as the Catholic Church and the UN recognize the genocide, but most countries don't. And if you think that's bad, then spare a thought for the Assyrians, who were subject to the same treatment, but only four countries officially recognize that genocide. Those four countries being Armenia, France, Germany, and Sweden. The fact that you can call yourselves the Young Turks and everyone's kind of cool with it, or that it's trendy to be a communist on college campuses and other places. I'm literally a communist. <laughs> just goes to show that some genocides, I guess, are just more important than others. And you might say, Rattlesnake, put the brakes on. That genocide was 100 years ago and the Israel conflict is happening today. And to that end, I'd say you've probably heard about the fact that Azerbaijan, just a few months ago, invaded and recaptured the disputed territory of Nagorno-Karabakh. They killed hundreds of Christian Armenians in the process and forced 120,000 of them to flee their homes. Like I said, you've probably heard about it, but you wouldn't have heard about it a fraction as much as you've heard about the other conflict. You also may not have heard that before the invasion of Nagorno Karabakh, the Azerbaijanis inflicted a blockade of food, aid, and electricity on the Christian Armenians in the area. And who is Azerbaijan's greatest ally and has been training their army for decades and supports them unconditionally? That's right, the Turks. So you can understand why this event was pretty jarring for the Armenian people and why they might be pretty concerned about the future implications of this, considering the geography of the region with hostile countries surrounding them, as well as the historical context. So make of all that information what you will. But I just wanted to point out one last slightly random thing. I wanted to highlight the oddity and the absurdity of the scene that you're witnessing when you see Cenk Yuga go on Patrick Bet David's show, where Patrick Bet David and Vincent Oshana are both Christian Armenian Assyrians, and Cenk is the head of the Young Turks. So rant over, back to the debate. You said, you said some very strong things about Cenk. You can now respond, Cenk. Yeah, this, uh, you should never have this guy on air. Everything he said is a lie. D I don't deny the Holocaust. That's insanity. And in terms of the Armenian genocide, uh, there is a powerful analogy there. Why was it a genocide? And yes, it was a genocide. Why? Because they moved and displaced so many people and killed civilians on the way. What is Israel doing? Moving and displacing millions of people and killing innocent civilians. It is the exact definition of a genocide. So I don't, I, I think the Jewish people are an amazing people and their, their culture is beautiful and I don't tolerate any anti-Semitism. But I think that the occupation is decaying the moral core of Israel. How long are you going to oppress these people? But Jen, and I know this guy, all he wants to do is an ad hominem attack. He's a liar. He's, and, and you could tell exactly what kind of indecent human being he is. But the main reason he's doing it is to avoid the topic. When are you going to stop murdering Palestinians and cheerleading it? Okay. If you're talking about Jen, genocide, you're the one right may, now may I, doing the genocide. May, may. Now, guys, just quickly, there are no winners from this brutal war. But if you really, really had to say that there was a winner, 
it would have to be Piers Morgan. I find him such a funny and peculiar specimen at times. Just look at his face when they're arguing. He is just seeing clicks and views and dollar signs, and he's absolutely relishing every moment and has been raking it in recently. He's gotten over 2 million subscribers now. And believe me, I am not hating. Absolutely fair play to the guy. This is the kind of coverage that I do appreciate. It's entertaining and wide reaching, and I don't think it's as effective as it could be, but it does allow for both sides to have their say. And now back to the debate. May I respond? May I respond? <laughs> yes, well, go ahead. May I respond? Go ahead. You know, I've spent I've spent my life debating people. Whenever someone whenever someone starts using personal names and screaming like a lunatic, they're losing the debate. Let me remain. You're factual. the one First who of used, all, made the up Palestinians, things. The Palestinians. The Palestinians. The, uh, the Palestinians were offered a state in 1936 in the Peel Commission. They rejected it. They were offered a state in 1947 in the UN Partition Plan. They rejected it. They were offered a state in 1967 after Israel conquered Judea and Samaria in the West Bank. They rejected it. They were offered a state in 2000, Yasser Arafat, Ehud Barak. They rejected it. They were offered a state with Ehud Omer 2008. They rejected it. They have the, Israel unilaterally withdrew from Gaza in 2005, and they did not create a state in fact, where were you, Cenk, when you say that you care about Palestinian children when Hamas stole the highest rate of per capita international foreign aid, larger than the Marshall Plan, from Palestinian children, did not build schools for them, did not build hospitals, took all the money to buy bombs and to build a network of tunnels, which is larger than the, than the New York subway system. Where were you then? Why are, did you only come up now? In fact, when Bashar al-Assad killed 600,000 children, Arab children, when he gassed them with mustard gas, my organization took out full-page New York Times ads to protect them from sarin gas. Where were you then? You don't care about Arab children. You are a Jew hater, defined as someone who only Shut wants to lie up. and say that the Jews you are bigot. genocideers. You and racist. don't try to cancel me and say that I shouldn't be on. You're not a producer of this show. Because you are ignorant of the facts and ignorant of the history does not mean that you can cancel right, Jake, my voice. Jake, Thank your you response. Much. Guys, if you're enjoying this video and if you appreciate all of the effort that I put in to bring you these like 30 minute documentaries every single day, then I would greatly appreciate it if you could take a second out of your day to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel because if you haven't already, then what are you waiting for? Back to the clips. Okay, so first of all, you, this guy is a full blown bigot. He's one of the most racist people I have ever seen, does not value Palestinian lives at all. And everything he said about me is 100% untrue. I was vicious in my criticism of Bashar al-Assad. I have criticized Hamas over and over again, and I think what they did in the attack against Israel was reprehensible. But for God's sake, how long are you going to occupy these people? For me, the idea of Israelis and Palestinians or Muslims or Jews being different is absurd. Those are just stupid labels that we put on people. They're all human beings. I value the Israeli life just as much as I value the Palestinian life. We're all human. Stop using these nonsense Jake, labels Jake, let me ask to you a kill question. each other. Jake, and let me... all this guy wants to do is more murder of Palestinians. Jake, let me ask when you... are you going to let them go? Hamas is a bunch of idiots. They should take that stuff out of their charter. It, all it does is hurt the Palestinian cause. I agree. There's no call for it. It's dumb and it's immoral. But Hamas claims that they would like to do these things, and from time to time they do these attacks that are horrible and they should never do. But Israel actually kills Palestinians, actually occupies Palestine, actually denies the Palestinians a state. So there's this absurd talk of like, oh, if Hamas was super powerful, they might deny Israel its existence, except Israel does exist. And, it, and, the, and the Palestinian state does not exist because Israel is blocking their state. So stop using, pro and I'm not Pierce, saying it to Pierce, you, Pierce, Pierce, may I, but may this I, propaganda, may I this propaganda, I hold on, hold on. You know, Cenk, 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 you and I, you and I, that, you and I, Cenk, you and I. This is so embarrassing for Cenk. I physically cringe every time I see this. This is a time when he had the chance to stay cool and factual, but instead he went from zero or about maybe like 70 to full on 110 triggered college activist 
in a heartbeat. Bigot. And just started malfunctioning and going back to his liberal caveman roots and just yelling, bigot, racist, racist. And whether you agree or not, and as imperfectly as it was, the rabbi laid down his argument there and he came with his facts. And then Jenk just started yelling like a spoilt child who'd been sent to his room. Stop using these nonsense Jenk, labels. Jenk, me... And I do get that this is a situation that can summons all kinds of emotion from people and they do get triggered by this. But it's just my opinion that as a political commentator, I think you should be able to rise above tantrums. It's your job to give facts and logical perspectives and add some value to the conversation. If we wanted to hear an unhinged maniac's perspectives, then we'd just go and watch Joy Reid. And I accept that maybe I'm just heartless, guys. But if people who are actually in the war zones, getting shelled and losing loved ones, can give measured and coherent interviews, then I'm sure Jenk from his air-conditioned office can do the same. And now let's have a look at some of the highlights from the rest of the debate. You and I, you and I, Jenk, you and I, you and I are almost the same age, and I'm actually quite worried for how upset you get on TV. You gotta protect your health. You're just kind of losing it. Now calm because down. Because I'm upset let's that be clear. you uh, keep advocating when you, when for you the murder of saying, civilians. Jenk, 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 you have like to stop terrorist. yelling. You have to stop screaming, and you need to know the facts. The Palestinians were offered a state seven times and they rejected it seven times. Bill Clinton told Yasser Arafat in 2000, you have made me a failure as president because Israel was giving you 97% of Judea and Samaria and the old city of Jerusalem. And Ehud Barak even offered the Temple Mount, the holiest site in Judaism, and the Palestinians rejected it. You simply don't know the history. Read a book. In fact, read a Wikipedia article before you get on TV. Number two. You know, you made a very good point before, Pierce, that Winston Churchill is the greatest British statesman and hero of the 20th century. Let's remember, when Churchill was faced with a genocidal threat of the Nazis, you know what he did, which Israel would never consider doing? He laid waste to 70% of Dresden, Essen, Cologne, Berlin. He, dis he eviscerated Germany and turned it into a parking lot, murdering about six million German civilians. Israel has never even considered doing a thousandth of that. And FDR acquiesced to it, and he's considered our greatest president of the 20th century. And then Harry Truman dropped two atomic bombs on Nagasaki, Hiroshima. So I, and, and Israel has nuclear weapons, has never considered doing that. Israel opened up. Well, they've actually, humanitarian okay, let border. me come. Is there any limit? You as a rabbi, of the number of children who need to be killed to get rid of Hamas here, or is there no limit? Of course there's a limit. We mourn the death of every Arab, Muslim, Palestinian child as if a Jewish child died. They are absolutely equal before God. That's why Israel withdrew completely and utterly in 2005, something that Cenk will not even acknowledge. There isn't one Israeli soldier, there wasn't until this new invasion, because of the attack on Zderot, because of the, I went to those places, Pierce, I was there two weeks ago. I saw the blood caked on the walls, congealed to three or four inches. I saw the knives that were used to murder entire families. We saw the place where Thai, not Jewish, Thai farm workers who were growing pumpkins were beheaded. We saw the body of, of Shani Luke, and I spoke to her mother, Ricarda, who was taken naked. These are religious men in Hamas, taken naked in her underwear and her bra, her dead body, these necrophilia savages. We saw all that. How many, how many Palestinian children need to die? God forbid, not one. All Hamas needs to do is let the civilian population go south. Stop using them as human shields. Hamas wants these Palestinian children to die. Every Palestinian child to Hamas is a bulletproof Okay, vest. but you said that they you said... for no other reason than to humiliate Israel. Israel did not withdraw. They controlled the borders of Gaza 100%. And as you can tell now, they cut off the water and power anytime they want. Uh, the Jewish people have been oppressed throughout history. My heart goes out to the Jewish people for all the pain and the suffering that they have endured through all of these years. But now Israel, unfortunately, is not the oppressed. It is the oppressor. Look at them dropping 7,000 bombs on grandmothers and children. There's an American nurse that explained on CNN yesterday about how she sees uh, little kids with 
burns all across their bodies. So Hamas is terrible. Yes, I can call for their surrender. That's easy. I don't like Hamas. I think Hamas is Muslim fundamentalist. But it's an impossible standard, and you know they're not going to meet that standard. And because you want to keep killing those civilians to show them how mighty you are and what a great oppressor you are, I'm sick of it. And it's not only ruining the Palestinians and causing their deaths, but it is ruining. It is calling. It is causing the moral decay of Israel. Blood libel. Blood libel. This is a blood Nonsense. libel against the Jewish people. Stop you may as well hiding. just say that we drink no, the blood it's not of Christian anymore. children and our mouths. It's not working. Cenk, okay. you are guilty You're of a blood libel on the eve of Kristallnacht. Yeah, 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 yeah. So to be honest with you guys, the way I see that, I know you guys are going to disagree with this in the comments a lot, but there was just so much hypocrisy to sift through in that debate to find any moments of value. The rabbi just kept on having a go at Jenk about getting emotional and using ad hominem attacks when literally the first thing that he said was an ad hominem attack about Jenk's poll numbers. Uh, Jenk is polling in the Democratic presidential primaries at 0%, nothing. He has a greater That's likelihood of being elected the new king of France and whilst he was having a go at Jenk about getting emotional, he looked like he was about to start foaming from the mouth. And he accused Jenk of all sorts of vile things, which you heard, and I'm not going to repeat. And I haven't seen any evidence that Jenk is any of those things. So for me, I just see those as sort of dirty, cheap tactics. So I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Maybe you guys see this differently than I do. But for me, I think it's hard to get anywhere when you have two guys who have a limited amount of time and they're using that limited amount of time to just shit on each other as hard as possible and use the most inflammatory attacks and appeals to emotion that they can possibly think of against each other. I don't think this moves us forward in the conversation, if that's even possible at this stage, but I can certainly appreciate this from an entertainment and from a free speech standpoint. So as always, guys, if you'd like to find me on Locals or Telegram or any of my social medias, you can hit those links below. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, if you haven't already, you'd click here. And if you'd like to watch another video, right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.